right, nice job. Good set. Let's do some social kick. Welcome back to the Social Kick Podcast. Who do I got on my left? I'm everyone, I'm John. And then who, who are my strangers to my right? I'm Luke. Brian. And, and we got our first guest. Yeah, special guest, Wade. <laughs> Woo! Ooh! And I'm Justin. So Brian and Wade, I think you guys got into somewhat of a is well, it heated conversation? Really our this? first guest. Yeah, oh, that is true. Cheers. 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 Welcome, yeah. Wade. Amen to that. Yeah. Should we all say what we're drinking tonight? Yeah. So uh, Wade, what do you got? I have a Sierra Nevada hazy little thing IPA. A hazy IPA uh, from a California brewery. Yes. Uh, I am drinking Trader Joe's finest simpler times lager. Actually, my first time drinking any of the Trader Joe's. How beers. is it? We also have uh, one of their German Oktoberfests here. I think there's a Trader Joe's one. Uh, maybe Which not. Which is the American and you got the 21st Amendment, right? Yeah, They're, what is that one? The Blood Orange? The Blood uh, Orange, yes. Yeah. yes. And then, Luke, what are you drinking? I am drinking sparkling water from Italy. Wait, why aren't you drinking an alcoholic drink? Yeah, you too, Justin. Uh. I wasn't feeling so good after practice this morning, and I have a swim meet tomorrow, apparently, with these two guys. So I'm yeah. being a bit of a, maybe I'll change my mind in a few minutes. John, but we'll you're not see. tapering? <laughs> <laughs> I've been on a taper for two years now. So, we are racing. Uh, this tomorrow. isn't gonna make a difference. Yeah. I got water in our fan, in my fancy forty ounce core water bottle. Oh man! Product placement. <laughs> boom, boom. What are you doing tomorrow, Justin? Uh, right now I'm entered in the two hundred free, two hundred fly, and hundred free. So it's gonna be a fun time tomorrow. Show close me to Can we do a minute. Can we do a prediction time for oh, tomorrow? Oh no, I don't know if that's a good. Oh idea. come on, Let's come hear on, time it. predictor. Oh. Hopefully a 225 in that 200 fly, maybe a 209, 210, 200 free, and maybe a 5900 free. Are you going to suit up? I am planning on it. It looks oh. like you already shaved down. Did I got hair. Down? No, I'm not shaving. <laughs> <laughs> you should have saw. So we did Movember at, at the clinic last oh, year. Man, it was like the whisker off between him and Mike. Just who could get like <laughs> one or two little strands little strands going and then, up there. And like Thanksgiving dinner, we shaved our sides because we were like, we cannot look this weird like it's like weird whiskers that come off our face so it, it doesn't look good it's like patchy do you feel like it's cheating to <clears throat> do movember growing the beard first at least for like a week or two and then going to the mustache i don't know what are the official like methods or rules on how to do movember? well that's what i'm asking i don't there know is, it's unofficial <laughs> i'm sure there's an official website on how to do movember but what do you think wade I, i've never taken part in movember so i, I have no idea. Is okay, this could, the, is this could the normal you, facial could hair you for you, or would you grow a mustache from ground up? Could I? No. My, I mean, this is like this is the most beard that I've ever had. It's, it's, uh, it's, it comes in patchy. It's very patchy. It's so, very terrible. So when you <laughs> shave down, it wasn't that much of a difference. It was still a big difference. What for when for, you shaved for like, swimming? Yeah. Uh, -huh. uh yeah. It was, it was still a, it was a, it was yeah. a good difference difference yeah so to give some context on wade so wade and i swam in high school together and in our first episode i talked about uh my one of the most motivating years that i had in the sport of swimming which was my junior year of high school the summer between my junior and senior year of high school wade was a senior uh just about to go swim at texas that summer and got his national cut uh long course in the hundred butterfly 55 8 or something uh like 55 9 0 55 9 0 and the cut was 55 9 9 at the time it was we swam that meet at, snuck under it yeah, yeah it, was, <laughs> it was uh it was at auburn where that meet was and uh little little did i know at the time i was about to go swim at auburn the following year anyway so uh wade and i best friends from high school wade swam at texas from 2002 to 06 uh, to 07, yeah. To 07, and uh, let's see, best finish at trials was 10th in the 200 fly in 10th 04. 10th in the wow. 200 Whoa. butterfly. Yeah, yep. 20068. Okay. And um, I, let's see, I think I was fourth at U.S. Nationals, uh, and um, I never never scored at NCs, which was like, that was my, my big thing that I, mm. that I didn't do, but... Uh, but Made the team. So. You made a team. Yeah, yeah. Well, a tough team yeah. at it. Mm -hmm. did, did, how many times did you guys win? Once? Maybe uh, for us, it? no. These guys these got it right right. Uh, I think, what, five years in a row? Yeah, so from, uh, yeah, so we won the. So uh, right when I got yeah, there, yeah. Oh, they started winning. They started winning. So it was a five year run. Because we had had yeah. a four year run right before. Right. So Texas won uh, right until I got there. And then uh, I apparently was I was that there. Was that the Pearsall, Crocker, Neil Walker era? Um, so Pearsall was my, my year. Okay. Um, so before that, and, and I think Neil was, he was, he was 
before that. Yeah, that was like that was like that was like Tommy Hannon, oh, Nate yeah. Dusing, um, yeah. uh, who else was on there? Uh, oh, uh, Rainer Kendrick. <laughs> yeah, Kendrick. Kendrick was was there. Um, uh, who else? Daniel Toro, who I talked to uh, uh-huh. just yeah. a little while ago. And then no. you had some of the good divers, Troy Dumay. Mm-hmm. The Dumay wow. brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The brothers, yeah. yeah they were oh, always right up man. there. Uh-huh. Um, uh, Jamie Roush. Uh, Joe Montag. He was on the Olympic team in 2000, wasn't he? Jamie yeah, Roush? 2000. Uh, yeah. 800 meter freestyle relay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Who were your coaches besides Eddie Reese? Who else were your coaches during your five years there? Uh, uh, Chris Kubik. Oh, oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. so it was Ed and Kubik. Mm-hmm. Um then we had Matt Scoggin as the uh, the diving coach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was pretty much just the uh, the two of them two of the them entire the time. Wow. Was yeah. Eddie doing one specific group and Kubik doing another group, or it's just kind of like a mix? They bag just mix group. it around. They mm-hmm. had their whole system of working mm-hmm. where um, I don't know, like Eddie. It, it's not quite good cop, bad cop, uh, but it seemed like Kubik would uh, kind of tone down a little bit. Uh, of Eddie's wildness and, and his crazy ideas of what he wants to do, yeah. and uh, but then uh, it was funny with Cubic too because when you when you get there as a freshman, uh, he you're a little bit afraid of him, and um, the the older you get, the more buddy buddy you get with him until mm-hmm. like you're just by your senior year, you and Cubic are just yeah clicking you know, yeah exactly. It's got to be a good feeling when you get to that point with a coach, especially mm-hmm. developing those relationships. Mm-hmm. Did many swimmers get there with Eddie, in your opinion, or it was? Oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I'm not saying like Eddie standoff sure. at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he's. Um, I mean, Eddie. Eddie's fantastic, mm-hmm. but Eddie's. He's got like a lot more. Um, that he that he has to to think about sure some again. people say eddie never answers a question no with, he doesn't he only answers questions with questions <laughs> he he yeah. only answers oh things goodness. with like whatever he, whatever he was thinking about or whatever he wants to say <laughs> i gotta i gotta get an example of this yeah. one give us a good example I, of I uh, whether you or something you've heard oh okay of of course, what's the real call tonight uh he'd be like well I'm thinking about going hunting this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just kind of in his own world or something. Or? Is, he, is he like a better check kind of guy? Like a well, no, I don't know. Um, like a Popovich kind of guy. Part of it might be because his hearing was going. Oh, <laughs> so I just like, answered whatever he thought he heard. <laughs> oh literally God. just not heard what this he is said. So, so bad. <laughs> but, but no, um, uh, a lot of times he he just didn't really care to answer your question because uh, it just wasn't that important yeah, yeah. we were talking earlier about what a dynamic was like on deck because you got three world record holders at a time on a team and then you had a full range what was like the dynamics of crocker and Pearsall and well one thing that you have to remember is hansen that, there uh mm-hmm. yeah brendan yeah. was there but it, it's not just those guys either yeah. um because all of the olympic uh, olympians were still there training so mm-hmm. right. in i think That's in right. 2004 or 2000, uh, I think in 2000, we put like a third of the U.S. men's team together. Oh, yeah. Um, Dave Walters. Uh, this no, is was later. Later. that was later. So you had Jamie Roush, yeah. Dusing. Uh, was uh, Hannon later. snuck in in the 100 fly. That's, That's right. right. Um, and then uh, uh, Neil Walker yeah. was mm-hmm. always on the team. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, Brendan missed that year. Mm-hmm. Any international uh, guys? Uh, not, not many, many right? That's no. And... I'm going to say this. I'm not sure if it's 100% true or not because we have had a few international guys here and there. But um, but since Eddie was the coach of the U.S. men's team a lot of times, uh, Mm -hmm. I think he wanted to to promote the U.S. men's team Mm -hmm. and to train U.S. men's swimmers Um, and and, and not necessarily like – get the, the rest of the competition mm. better. Not not to say that he was So you're saying Eddie has an America first bias? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But he was just you know, he's there and he's like, well, let's see let's see who we can get from uh, from the US. And he did that a lot. Yeah. Where he mm-hmm. would get these guys that are just <clears throat> out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, Sean Jordan is probably the, oh, yeah. the the biggest example who um, he was a guy that, that came in uh, he he was a walk-on, I believe, his wow. his uh, freshman year, 
and um, he just came in and told Eddie, like, uh, I'm going to make the Olympic team. And Eddie's like, mm, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going hunting later. <laughs> 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 but, but, uh, but then, of course, you know, Sean trained like a beast, and uh, Eddie pushed him, and, and he made, uh, made two Olympic teams. Wow. Uh, it just, I mean, he was out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Out of what type nowhere. of times did he come in from high school with? Any idea? Don't know. This, yeah. this is like in 88. Yeah, so, so it's like, like, war, like yeah. all that, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I mean, as an outsider, I mean, you look at the Texas men's team. I mean, and it's it's true. You see only American men more or less on it. You don't see many internationals somewhere. So that's interesting that there was this, you know, strong, strong desire to, you know, continue with the American men and trying to mm-hmm. build that up, at least with Eddie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But surely he must have been approached I and mean, people want to train with Pearson. Sure. People want yeah. to train with Hanson, you know, like people Yeah, whether they're right. collegiate or not, yeah. right? And whether club, even yeah. post grads mm-hmm. when you like you said you put on a third of the Post grads we we got a few. Like okay. we uh Chanteau came and trained trained mm-hmm. with us for a little while. Um and yeah, a few people would come yeah. in every once in a while. Well, one person I remember is like uh, seeing is like David Cromwell. Is yeah, Cromwell. Yeah, he was yeah. my roommate for oh, a while. Right. And, then, <laughs> and then Dean Ferris goes there and trains now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. been a constant thing. That yeah. Yeah. Like still American bonus. men though, yeah. right? But I mean, yeah, yeah, true. I don't know if you were alluding to it, but uh, yeah, I'm surprised more international people aren't trying to train there mm-hmm. though. At least whether they're yeah. collegiate or not, I wonder if he, it's he kind of puts them at bay or kind of closes that door or mm-hmm. what. Yeah, I I, I don't yeah. know the specifics. No, on for sure. Either, he but... welcomed my guy who went there, John Lopage. But mm-hmm. my guy I mean like coach or someone who went to some Texas. Yeah. And who John wasn't that I mean he was just made a team. But yeah, he, he was no problem. Joseph yeah. schooling, welcome. Recently, schooling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I guess yeah. that's true. What do you, what do you think is uh, Eddie's greatest strength as a coach? Um I think honestly I like the fact that uh, he he doesn't yell. He doesn't have yeah. to try and motivate people by by any sort of anger or or anything or like that. Um, oh, he he, he basically just expects the best out of everyone. Mm-hmm. He doesn't he doesn't want it. He expects it, mm-hmm. and and then he creates that atmosphere on the team where everyone expects the best out of everyone else, mm-hmm. and so. If you if you let him down, or if you're if you if you're not doing what you should be doing, it would just be like, okay, <clears throat> and then you just you feel even worse, obviously, because yeah. now you you've disappointed him, you've mm-hmm. let down him, you've let down the team, you've let down yourself, and you're mm-hmm. just like, like oh no, I, I oh I shouldn't have done that. So kind of like a John Wooden style of coaching. Yeah, exactly, say, yeah. and that's mm-hmm. that's that's his his. Uh, mm-hmm. That that would be, I think, his go-to mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. for for who he wanted to emulate as mm-hmm. a coach. Mm-hmm. I mean, he used to he used to talk about uh, about UCLA and, and the basketball dynasty all the time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, we like sometimes he would like put on a little John Wooden speech oh, or goodness. something like that. <laughs> yeah, very uh, very much. Mm-hmm. In I'm, that I'm putting effort. myself in your shoes. Though. So imagine you go on deck and this set is you know twenty one hundreds in a minute. Mm-hmm. Oh, one hundred five fly. And you're like, oh, I can't do that. There's no way I can do that. And, and and say you don't make it. I mean, did he set that knowing that, listen, wait, I know that's in you and you can do that. I know, uh, I mean, say you don't make it, you feel disappointed. Like, how did, does he push you too much? Um, too little? Does he know how far you can go because he's so experienced? Now, on on like? a set like that, uh, I, I actually remember a set exactly right. like that. Mm-hmm. It was, um, <clears throat> we did 3100s on a minute. Right. Um, which, <laughs> oh, Jesus. But, no. <laughs> I need another beer. <laughs> Amen to that. But, hold Brian's on, hold like on, PTSD. Hold on. Oh, PTSD. We need a drink break but, before but the you story. See that we set, you're like, whoa. But you're, you're it's designed. You're designed. It's uh, a set that you're designed to, to fail. fail at. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're supposed to killer. fail. Um, you go as far as you can push yourself, mm-hmm. and and then eventually you get too tired. If you miss it, you uh, you wait to the to the next top mm-hmm. and then you push off and you keep going you finish your mm-hmm. 3100s you get that little rest and then you see how far you can go mm-hmm. uh a uh, little story on that we were doing that set um and uh michael clee was was going mm-hmm. and and he's just a machine yeah. he, he doesn't stop Train he just machine. keeps going keeps going keeps going holding 55s and down, 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 he down. was holding 55s on that <laughs> cool. and, yeah. i've seen i've seen this Maybe on, on well, so the, the flow swim video, yeah, I think swimming, he did, yeah. that was that was the best one that I saw. Um, shout out yeah. to Clee, I think I saw the Wugs team with him. Um, but he uh, 15 ones on a minute, but he was holding 51s, yeah, 
or he like he can descend like really well. Like he knows crazy. when to like. That was one of the most impressive sets that I've seen. Because he's talking about Cleve. Yeah. I mean, so we uh, we got to uh, we got to number thirty, and he just kept going. What? Did, like yeah. Where, was like, where where was he going? <laughs> He just did number 31. Because he was in a zone. And number 32, and number 33, and number 34. And eventually, Eddie was just like, all right, all right, Mike, we... (laughs) We get it. Enough. enough. It's not (laughs) even like we get it, like, stop trying to show off or anything. It was like, I got a plan for your your training. Yeah, yeah. Like, you can't go too far right now. Don't kill yourself in practice. But Clee would have just... He would have kept going. He probably... I mean, he's in that Eric Vint kind of style. Oh, really? Of, of like, Mm -hmm. of just, like, a super, super... Uh, intensely mentally strong. Mm-hmm. You've heard of can... stories of Kieran Perkins. So yeah. Kieran Perkins used to show up to practice and um, by himself, and the pool was locked, and the coach didn't show up. He would climb over, break into the pool, and still do his workouts yeah. that by himself. You heard that insane kind of mentality. Mm-hmm. Was... He has some swimmers who clo- swim blind, that they close their oh eyes God. when they're swimming, right? Just to get to the loss. Imagine swimming miles, just with your eyes closed, yeah. different terms. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. That's a whole... Who was mm-hmm. the was st- Stanford assistant coach? He's now in Minnesota. Uh, Men's. Men's. Oh, yeah. Kostov. Kostov, yeah. Jeff Kostov, Kostov. Yeah, kind of like similar, reminds me of Kostov. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, sorry, Brian. Um, so my club coach Tony Bates, he was he's kind of good buddies with Eddie, and I think he would say this quote that Eddie would say is like, um, "If you're on time, you're late." You know, and that was like one of the best quotes I've ever heard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that really was like the best um, like sort of lesson you learned from whether it be cubic or Eddie, what did really instill in, into me like, mm-hmm. if you you got to get there five minutes early, yeah. whatever the 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 time you got to be there is, you're five minutes early. If you're not there, you're late. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. great. Um, mm-hmm. And the other thing, I, I was telling you about this, uh, but the all right to go back to to the lesson that that uh, Eddie instilled in us. It, he he was able to get he's able to get a really good team culture together mm-hmm. right. together, and so everyone's pushing <clears throat> each other. And that's where must be nice came mm-hmm. in, mm-hmm. where we would say it to each other if if someone was slacking, if someone was like not all doing right. what they're supposed to be you. doing, uh, you just like he would just call out all around the pool, must be nice, oh, <laughs> which is like it must be nice to not have to not work as anything. hard as us. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it must be nice to be so talented that you don't have to work oh, like the God. rest of us. So. so, what was the example you gave me earlier? Uh, like someone getting out of the water to uh, to to go pee. Oh my god! Yeah, and, and it must be nice. <laughs> yeah. So it's like everything. Yeah. It's, you guys it's would be on top of it. It's, it's, hard, hard. it's hard. It's hard because like you might actually yeah have like some pain in your shoulder and you're like stretching yeah. and you'll get must you'll get be yelled nice. at. Yeah. yeah. You talked about really hard workers. You just mentioned talent. Who is the most talented swimmer you saw that you can't believe how fast they swam? Like you know they just had they just had it. The most talented swimmer. That you. I, okay. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if you heard of this guy Wade. Most, they that hard and they just show up and all of a sudden they just execute. There's people who just had it. Um, I don't know. It, if you see any of those, doesn't that just sound like everyone? One, everyone, everyone like everyone was working one, right? so hard. Yeah. Everyone like, was, Texas is known for really hard grinding it out, and not just all of them stepping up and like flying like a Gary Hall who just like. Pfft, yeah, it up, right. Gary, Gary Hall, Hall is the ultimate must be nice. There we go. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Irvin. Anthony Irvin. As also, say, they're, they're, they're nice. like the, oh, really? the same. Yeah. yeah, same breed. Yeah. yeah, ultimate must be nice. I don't know. As a distance swimmer, we I would always just constantly be thinking that about the uh, the, the breaststrokers and uh, the, uh, the the fifty freestylers, the sprinters. God, we, we'd see him getting out of the water and we have like 4,000 more yards to do. We're just oh like, <laughs> but I mean, that's our life. You know? this but, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. that's our, if I could sprint, I would. <laughs> every, I think every distance swimmer, if they could sprint, they would. Maybe yeah. not Michael Klee though. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> Klee could sprint though. Yeah. He, he could throw down a mean 100, 200. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And I mean, it's, it's, the 500 is well, essentially like a 42 or something probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus. Hey, I have a question about um, Eddie's freestyle technique. A lot of Eddie's freestylers are known for swimming sort of a head-up mm-hmm. freestyle, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. where the water hits the the forehead is sort of like closer to the eyes, whereas the freestyle that I was taught from David Marsh was like a lot of the, the water line hits your head higher up, therefore your head's position is lower. Mm-hmm. But Eddie's freestylers, particularly sprinters, are known for swimming with more of a head-up style. Do you, I mean, do you have anything to say about that? Uh, no, I, I don't really – I can't really uh... – 
attest to that. It's no. a secret Because you're yeah. his own type. <laughs> I don't know why you're talking, but I have to kill you. Yeah. I have yeah. one Eddie story. So when I was 15, I made, I went to like a Grand Prix meet at University of Michigan, and I did the tuner fly on a Sunday, and I think I maybe went like 2.30 in season long course. Like I was a bad in season oh tuner boy. flyer, but somehow everyone scratched. And my coach was like, all right, we can go run. And my coach at the time, he lost over 100 pounds. So he was Whoa. super into fitness super and all this. He lost over 100 pounds. He's like, John, if you run the Michigan Stadium steps with me, I w- I'll let you scratch 200 fly finals. Because everyone scratched. There was only like 12 people who made it back at night. So we go run all the stadiums. We put our keys down before a run. Someone picked up the keys oh, and no. sent them into Kroger or the local grocery store thinking that someone lost them. Yeah. So we had to call AAA to get his car jumped. So we're sitting out there for like, whatever hours maybe five hours getting sunburnt because we're from ohio and any bit of sun burns us go back to the meet because we had this one stud high school girl jenny forrester um on our team who was doing the 400 im and i'm sitting there sunburnt like behind the warm-up pool and eddie comes up to me he goes nice shoes and i look down I'm like, oh my god, Eddie Reese is talking to me. We both have these like old man New Balance shoes, and he gets up and walks away. Yeah. <laughs> and that was all he said. Yeah. And I was like, kind of all, in awe, slash, like so exhausted from doing whatever. It fit like 110,000 people this Michigan stadium, doing all the stadium steps there. And then Eddie Reese goes, nice shoes, and walks away. I'm just like, what, where the hell am I? What is going on right now? <laughs> Eddie, Eddie used to have this thing where uh, he would just he would get you. On the elbow, like, like, like he would grab you with his hand on the elbow. Yeah, like if uh, <laughs> if he was talking to you, he'd just be like, and just like hold you. That's such a power move. And it just like it is. Yeah. old man and move. You just like, yeah. you're just like oh, feel my strain. I'm, I'm in his grasp. David <laughs> David Marsh used to hit you with the the poke in the chest. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah, fi- there was you. the finger point in the chest, and you're like, oh, I just want to smack you. Right <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Eddie would get that. He'd be like, all right what we got to do now and to start talking to you, but he's just got your elbow right I'm there. Going hunting later you're like, I, I can't, I can't do anything about this. Was his like, like grass pretty rough It's not too. hard. No, oh, no, no. It's just oh. firm. It's just like that old man firm <laughs> strength where you're like, that's like NLP. Man. I, it's and like, he's like, Oh, he's got you one time. All right. So the, uh, the governor of Texas, uh, Rick Perry, he used to swim at the pool all the time. Hmm. And, um, and so it'd be like right after we got finished with morning practice uh, his, his two security guards would come in, and then you know Rick Perry would come on in with his uh, with his. Did his he wear ju- a speedo or a jammer? Jammer. He was wearing his jammer. jammer. <laughs> That's a jammer. <laughs> wearing his jammer, he'd get in the water, and you know he'd start talking to uh, talking to Eddie, and like I swear there must have been some some weird hand battles going on. <laughs> <laughs> Because Eddie's got, he's Boy, got his it? like, his <laughs> elbow. Everyone's, everyone's <laughs> like, Perry, like, 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 and Perry, I mean, per- Perry's the governor of Texas. Yeah, you know, that's his job. Like, that's his job, shaking grip. hands. Yeah. Politicians have to be good at handshakes. Exactly. <laughs> he, he shakes hands all the time. And so, but, um, yeah, they, uh, I, I think they got along pretty well. What could Rick Perry <laughs> hold in 100 freeze? Uh, I don't know. I, I never stuck around for his <laughs> yeah. workouts, but I think he was mostly doing uh, just – yeah, a couple laps. Yeah. More. In our first podcast, we um we asked and we told the story of our last race. Oh, yeah. And yeah. and um and why why did we stop? What was the last race? What did we think about it? Did we have regrets? Talk about how you ended your career. Talk about your highlight of ten for the trials. Talk about why did you stop? What was your last race? Do you remember it? Yeah, absolutely. You know? yeah, Very clearly. It. Um and it, it was it was a little bit disappointing. Um my my last race would have been the uh, the 200 butterfly at uh, Big Twelves, um, and it ended up being my last race without me even knowing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Wow. Um, like my me. Yeah. Because I I had assumed that I was going to be making the the NCAA team. Oh yeah. Um, and so I I hadn't fully rested for for Big Twelves, because um, obviously unlike SECs. Big 12s isn't much of a competition. <laughs> you know, the Big 12s with only three teams. There's, a lot. So, uh, well, There's three teams now? Uh, there were at the time. I don't know <laughs> where it is now. Because um, yeah, so the, yeah. the conferences have, have mixed around. Because it was... So much uh, change. Yeah, us, A&M, and, and Missouri. Um, right. Which, like, that was it. <laughs> but... Well, must be nice. I, uh, I ended up being <laughs> the first alternate 
for the uh, for the NCAA team. So it's like I was. Wow. Oh, that's that. Sucks. I was the first guy that what didn't get in. So why didn't you continue afterwards? What club schooling? I mean, school ended. You I graduated was, and I was just done. done. Just done. That's, I was. That's it. I was done. Ready? Like I. I was. I think I was done. Um, and to be honest, I. I like I. I was done. I think before that, yeah. and in that last mm-hmm. race, um. You know, there's that point where you're you're swimming, you're hitting the wall, you're getting your like your your gas, but you're like, all right, I'm just gonna step up and mm-hmm. and push it that next level. And I just didn't have it mentally mm-hmm. to uh, to to push myself that much further yeah. in the last race. Which I mean, it could be why I didn't make uh, yeah. mm-hmm. NCAA's. Um, I, I I think I just kind of I thought that I probably would make it. I thought my time was good, um, but I. I I don't know if I put like 100% into the last race, which I look back on as like a a bit of a disappointment now. Mm -hmm. Sure. But at the same time, um, you know, you you can't like, I can't like recreate those events where I'd been swimming competitively since I was seven. Three years, Mm -hmm. yeah. I was on Stingrays with Brian. Um, When did you join Stingrays? When you were seven? Yeah, when I was seven. So, yeah, it was like, uh, I'm a year older. So, um, yeah, but like from Stingrays mm-hmm. to Texas, and then mm-hmm. just like nothing but swimming, swimming. Did you try mm-hmm. changing events to see if that would help? Like maybe some 100 fly once in a while, or, or maybe so like, like a 400 like, free or so. I, I am. I got a I, the 100 long course meters, 100 fly. That was like my. Uh, it was like my my feel good. My Get feel it. good. <laughs> like, yeah, you didn't die because my my turns and my kickouts weren't that good, so I couldn't I couldn't do a hundred uh, hundred meter you short course. Once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like a uh, a long course one, you know, I was it wasn't. You know, everything's relative. I was like a fifty four seven hundred fly, so it was it's not legit, right? Yeah. But I mean, on on the stage low. where we were, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, like at Auburn, a fifty-four. Well, you ended up being much better. Two hundred fly long course. Two hundred fly long course. Yeah, two double yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah. Didn't yeah. have the turns. Uh, didn't didn't have the Mao Chao go that two double O at one point? What did Mao? What did Mao Chao say? One fifty-five. No, but did he went, with an ugly with, stroke. Who went to the? I'm thinking back. I'm off today. Sorry. I remember that O six. I remember. We were just talking yesterday via text um, about the 2006 NCAAs, um, and now that you bring this up, I remember being on deck at that meet because it was uh, my NCAAs my junior year, but I kind of knew that you were probably getting close to being done with swimming, and I thought that NCAAs was going to be our last swim meet that we were swimming at the same meet together. Yeah. And it was in Atlanta, where we're from, at exactly. Georgia Tech. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so more people that we knew were there and around mm-hmm. the pool. And I remember... Jeff I remember Dash was hosting the after party or something like <laughs> that's, that. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I'll tell a quick aside. Important so, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, remember, I remember at that meet being on deck at NCAAs and, um, you know, the... Even though there was a strong rivalry between Texas and Auburn, uh, and in that era, and as there are with college swimming in different places, like you know, you and I had a personal connection. I remember being like really sad on the pool deck that that you weren't there at that meet. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was at the meet. Um, yeah, just not like on the team, you know. Like I yeah. Uh, so yeah. luckily, um, luckily uh, Eddie and Chris they they had me travel with yeah. the team. And and that's stay nice. with the team and everything. No, Chris nice. Kubik. Yeah, well, no, that's nice. How come? What, why was that decision? I was, I was one of the team captains oh, um, okay. of that year. So I, I said 2007. Yeah, it was 2006. No, you said 06. I thought oh. you did. Okay, yeah. well, nah. Um, yeah, uh, but yeah, I was the team captain that year. So um, and Atlanta was my hometown and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. they they brought me on that's on great. the team. That's um, a nice move for yeah. sure. So yeah, I was like I was like driving the van and stuff. <laughs> Which, chaperone yeah it's like chaperone like, it's like go to bed it's like all right guys let's just uh you know let's hit it tomorrow yeah <laughs> are you involved in swimming at all now no no at all. Mm-hmm. i mean uh, i no, i shouldn't say that um when i was living in china i i did coach swimming oh, wow. um just what was that like uh, yeah. I, I was teaching kids like from like five six seven basically mm-hmm. kids with zero water experience mm. teaching them how to swim good um gotcha. but otherwise no um there's no i think the hard part with swimming in a lot of ways is there's no like there's no like you can't go down to the pool and have like a pickup swim meet no. you know 
Hey guys, ten year old me, you, two fly right now. I got my jammer. I'm ready to go. What's our event order? Yeah, it's always practice, but there's never a pickup meet. Right. You don't have like a couple guys hanging out, be like, hey, do you want to like race some fifties? Race a two fly. That's why I got a stopwatch. Hey, bro, you want to race a hundred together? Yeah, it's just what it's, you got none of free. It bro. just doesn't. It doesn't happen. Here. You know, Nobody he has you, any interest in that. Yeah. Like with basketball, you, you might go down to the court and shoot some hoops. And, yeah. uh, something and play else a pickup game. game. Yeah, there's, there's something going on at the field, yeah. whether whatever park right. you're at. It's but so the, true. Uh, yeah, there's not like there's just it's not a lot of uh, practical yeah. outlets for for swimmers. Um, I mean, there's master swimming, of course, mm-hmm. but that's like it, it's still a very official thing where mm-hmm. where you gotta you gotta it takes a lot of time and, and involvement and effort to to get everyone together and, right. and, and mm-hmm. do a meet mm-hmm. yeah. but my my favorite thing about swimming was always racing mm-hmm. uh and specifically racing in practice mm-hmm. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah, i true. i loved just getting in there and and looking at the guy next to me in the yeah. lane next to me, uh, and, and cool. it didn't matter who it was. It could be Pearsall, it could yeah. be could be uh, Dusing, yeah. it could be Rick any Barry. of these guys. Rick Perry, <laughs> <Rick Barry. laughs> especially going Rick down, Barry. going down, Rick Perry. <laughs> I thought you were Rick talking Barry. about Golden State Warrior, Rick Perry. <laughs> Rick <laughs> Perry, like, looking at him and just <laughs> saying. You are not beating me yeah. on no, this. I agree. I'm, my yeah, hand yeah, is going yeah, to touch the wall yeah, before yours. Yeah, I, that's yeah. why I get through sets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. My hand is touching the wall mm-hmm. before you. Yeah. And and they're looking back at you saying the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. And nobody's watching you or judging. You're yeah. not yeah. doing it for attention. Just like, You're just doing it for your own. Yeah. 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 And so no, I, I don't yourself. have that that feeling of racing when I swim. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't really swim. Because mm-hmm. um, I love the racing. Well, I, I got I that back at Masters. Masters got that back into me 12 years ago, and I end up racing. And I have that now. I feel I can. Mm-hmm. I haven't done you, but I've mm-hmm. raced you guys all the time. Mm-hmm. Try to. But I, I get that. Tomorrow. I feel it. But it, should, it is <laughs> interesting with Masters, and I mm-hmm. think this is a big thing that Masters is still lacking in just like the mindset where it's still just like fitness swimming. Yeah. That's like, right. And I know our group right. is different where it's like we'll have sets and we'll do some speed work. But you go to like at most Masters workouts, it's like. 10 300 swim mm, where yeah. no one none of us want to do that right like if there no, was a set where it's like down. whatever we could all hop up and do a 25 yeah. all mm-hmm. out it might not be pretty but we could still race each other for mm-hmm. part of that exactly. right mm-hmm. enough the time but that's yeah. just not what masters is kind of oriented around it's very much the all right we're here to do like mm-hmm. a treadmill workout and, and just hit it and like go from you, there if you step up and play knockout on a basketball court or play horse or something like it still feels good to hit a three yeah, yeah. But exactly like it doesn't feel good to go you know a second and a half slower than you could swim a 25 free <laughs> a big time <laughs> but it could be fun though to like just yeah, like get up and do bad. a 25 or like right. a push 25 fast yeah. I mean, you'll still hurt a little, but you're not going to hurt like doing like 300s repeat, right? Yeah. Yeah. But there's none of that really in the Masters element. It's almost kind of frowned upon. I remember when I coached Masters, I'd always make them do dive sets because I was a pain in the butt. And they like, hate, I'd be like, it'd just be like 75s dive, like 475s on four minutes. And they would moan and groan. And I'm like, this is going to make you a better swimmer. This will also get a better caloric burn, which why most of you are here. And just doing slow, steady, like right. yeah. 2,000 yards at the mm-hmm. pace that they always go. It's like, just get up and do it. But but they don't want to do it. Mm. I think just it's like in their mind. But I think as someone that really likes to race, then why go? who wants to go do a 3,000-yard 10 three hundreds master yeah. practice, no, I, right? That would probably be the last. That right? That's yeah, like the, do that. that's yeah. the last thing I'd want to do. My uh, so a good friend of mine uh, just got second at uh, half Ironman. So he's a triathlete. He's a former a former runner and was a three fifty six in the mile. Um, and so he, he also ran at Texas. Uh, he's my year. His name's Darren Brown. And uh, and so he uh, is doing triathlon now. He just got second at seventy point three Atlantic City. Wow. And uh, but so recently I was visiting him in Boston where he and his wife live, and we. Uh, obviously, as as good friends, we met in grad school. He's an elite runner. He was coaching me in 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 uh in, to run my first marathon, and I've given him some swimming tips over over the time over the time that I've known him. But uh, this is the first time we swam together, and so we did a swim workout together. And I was giving him something that was more like threshold and lactate oriented. Sure. 
and he left that workout um, in a different way. You know, I was kind of pushing him through the workout. Okay, these are specific times that I want you to hit on this interval. And we were doing 200s, and then we st and then we did hundreds, and then we did some 50s. And I just said like, on this 50, I want you to go a 32. And you know, on these hundreds, I want you to hold 109s. Mm -hmm. And um, but after that workout, his his reaction was, wow, all the stuff that I've been doing has been these like longer, slower, endurance sort of efforts. And the way, I mean, he was kind of like dizzy. You know how you are when you build lactic acid sure, after yeah. a workout. It's like kind of a weird, like dizzy feeling. Mm -hmm. um, but but the benefits that you gain from that kind of work are, are totally different. And so he's so pumped on swimming now, having discovered like a new way to do workouts mm -hmm. in swimming that he did. And I'm learning in. that in running. It's in running, I just go and run. Yeah, exactly. I, I, yeah. I'm now learning flat lick. And yeah, and stuff. I learned that this year, yeah. uh, cycling, training for yeah. triathlon myself. Yeah learning how to do interval workouts right. uh, or using it's a fun. power meter on a mm -hmm. bike and do an indoor trainer. It there. Yeah. It was like, duh, of course these things, these Exist philosophies apply sports. to different sports, but mm -hmm. you know, it just hadn't applied them yet. And I think it's, it's the comment you made about how you feel getting on the blocks and going a second half slow, how that makes you feel. And the way I internalize it myself is I swam show course meters in Canadian university. Right. And now I'm swimming show course yards. And I always think if I can, better the repeats and the send-offs i used to do in the yard pool i used to do in, in meters like I, you know if, if, I, if i can hold under a minute and 100 yards free that's what i was doing at my best shape when i was short course meters so i figured you know what if i'm 10 percent slower 25 years later i'm doing all right for myself mm -hmm. yeah. so, so I, I i i'm lucky to have the the meters conversion but if you guys would really look at what you did in, in long course now and see what i was like in yards and see where you're at it's it's i mean give it it's been 10 years since you stopped in seven years since you stopped swimming right 10 mm -hmm. years for you 25 for me i mean that's that's not 25 20 <laughs> years for me 20 years for me the historian and, 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 and oh if you're boy. 10 percent slower i think that's a good down mm -hmm. good place and that's why i'm competitive against myself that's why i touch a wall i see 11 for 25 yard freestyle i'm like that's what i used to do for 25 meters off a dive and practice okay what makes you all right what, so okay so that makes you feel good in the pool now it feels a little better <laughs> that, that i i can mm -hmm. I, I feel less mm -hmm. bad about the times i'm touching because we all know we touch the one like already i just mm -hmm. don't convert it to what i used to do sure but it feels it's mm -hmm. a if you were to get back wait if you were to get back in the pool now and do some workouts what do you think like would make you feel like okay i'm, I'm in pretty decent shape like i'm happy with that huh um it'd be really hard um I don't know. I don't know if I ever would feel that again because I, I started trying to swim a little bit here and there. Sure. Uh, the problem I, I was living in China for the last like twelve years, pretty much. Oh wow. Um, Ni hao. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the problem with swimming in China is is uh, it, it's kind of just like a lot of the pools that you're swimming at are just like anything goes. So oh. uh, there's not a lot of circle swimming. Uh, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of breaststroke, mm -hmm. so people are wide just swimming any <laughs> anywhere they want with like wide breaststroke kicks going oh. over. Like kids, kids, oh, people oh, just crazy. people people swimming horizontally across the pool. No. <laughs> Sometimes there's no <laughs> lane ropes. Oh my god, I smashed. <laughs> that's my what the face roads are like. Time. Can you just get in and sprint and scare everyone off? <laughs> I, that's what I would right? try when and do. When I swim 24-hour fitnesses in LA, I just yeah. dive in and sprint that's and scare what off the people making out. I did that in London, <laughs> and I got told off. So <laughs> you're swimming too fast. Can you slow down? And I got told in London, stop <laughs> swimming so fast. Yeah. I'm splashing people or something. Well, I, I smashed my face <laughs> in the wall one time because uh, I was doing backstroke. I'm just doing backstroke, and I go in for my flip turn, and I just smash the wall. No, they had backstroke flags, but they didn't, they didn't put them in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> they just, they're like, oh, we need... This is the wall <laughs> flag. This is where the wall is. <laughs> and this is why I count they're my like, strokes. They're like, we, uh, they, they had oh, backstroke flags. Love though. you, China. And <laughs> it's five feet, not five meters. <laughs> <laughs> but they just, they just put up backstroke flags, so they're like, well, we're supposed to have backstroke flags, but they didn't put them at the, the standard... <laughs> location so they put them way awesome. closer to the wall so oh, i'm like no. i've got two strokes <laughs> oh, and how long were the pools were they yards meters um 33 and a third <sighs> mostly London mostly they were to third. flat mostly just flags yeah. constantly yeah. 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 You. 25 meters 25 yeah. meters yeah. Yeah. meters is standard okay for mm -hmm. uh for like indoor pools mm -hmm. at like a fitness place um Great. This there, is good. there's also there's this one outdoor pool that was really nice that had a uh, 50 meter mm -hmm. um 50 meter more at uh, this um, is in beijing, beijing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and of course you could always go to like the water cube but they've sure i actually never went there which is weird um 
they've like turned it into a water park. So mm-hmm. I'm not sure. It's interesting. The pool that we swam at last weekend was modeled after the Georgia Tech pool built mm-hmm. by the Chinese. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. I, Georgia Tech pool, Trinidad, that was my, Trinidad. that was one of my favorite pools. Yeah, you guys must have swam there a million yeah. times, huh? Yeah. Back when it was, uh, really liked when it, it, when it was open, open air. Yeah. When it was open air, it was the best. It was like so cool. cool. Summertime. Yeah, so. Summertime I, state. Right, so you mentioned Jeff Dash <laughs> earlier, who was <laughs> a Dash. 200 butterfly. I know this who, story. Who swam I, I it. you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Dash was a tuna butterfly. He was a uh, swim at Swim Atlanta when Wade and I were swimming for stingrays in Georgia. I was right behind him when this happened. <laughs> and uh, we were ge- you're getting ready to swim. I don't know what event it was, but uh, Jeff. So they had the the blocks at the time. Well, you can watch a video of the '96 Olympics and see what kind of block they were. It's pretty much like the Omega block now without the wedge. So they're like nice blocks with the pedestal. Yeah, and Jeff normal. Dash would always be stretching behind the block, and he was like a big built human. Did not look he like a swimmer. Huge. He was a big he was a linebacker. Big, yeah, he was. He was really. He was like kind of stout, and he was a butterflyer. Yeah, and a two hundred butterfly. Two hundred flyer. Oh my god. Two hundred flyer. He was a big dude. I think he swam at Arizona. Like, give me Arizona. some numbers yeah. on this guy. Yeah, he was fast. Or like, uh, what size? Like six feet tall. Oh, oh. I gotta look. He his wasn't hole. that tall. No. I want to say he, was, he might have been six foot, but he was probably two thirty. Yeah. 230? Yes, he was a big dude. Holy moly. And Jeff, very, very and I remember this meet at Georgia <laughs> Tech. Foot, we were swimming like Georgia State meet at, at Georgia Tech, and Jeff Dash was stretching on the block, and he would grab the front he of the block. He SMS right now. He would grab the front oh, wow. of the block, and yeah. then just like Rip stretch like, like anybody would. You put your like oh, leg up right. on the block, yeah, and you stretch a little bit. And then I remember when this happened, Jeff Dash was stretching on the block, and he ripped the entire surface of the block oh off of the pedestal while he was stretching. And he said, hey, wait, you know, can you hold this for me? <laughs> you know, thinking about it now, 6'1", 215, 144, 47'9". Recent times? No, no, no. No, this is no 1999. Right. He was right, 44 so, what? He's 200 fly. So 47, 9, 200. In 99, yeah, uh, that 44 is. is. That's so he was really, really fast. He was a 144, 200 fly, a 148, 2 IM. Yeah, 144 was. Um, 351, mm-hmm. 4 IM. Was like, was Victor that Davis did that. Yeah. Victor Davis really? ripped, ripped the block off as well. Did it stop the meet for like an hour? Yeah. 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 Because they didn't like, have like a we, quick fix for the blood. What Shaq, so, when Shaq first dunked and broke the thing. Yeah, it was, was, was kind of like Shaq. that for swimming. Uh, and people who grew up in Georgia were at that meet. were like, do you know what Victor Davis is? Come on, Wade. <laughs> Someone uh, know who I know. Help me wager my only hope. <laughs> Gold medal um, uh, Olympics in breaststroke in '84. Yeah, Canada. Yeah. Okay. Come on, you don't know these? Yeah. So by by <laughs> oh, by oh, six NCA is when they closed right. in the Georgia Tech pool. So he's um, swimming. They had it again recently. So what Jeff is still swimming. He's swimming masters right now. So shout out to Jeff Dash. He's swimming masters. He is. So he's still swimming. Let's see what time he goes now. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is so weird. He, he's top 10 results. So, All American honors. Let's see. It's going to be awesome. He swims. So, uh, short, uh, in 2010 <laughs> is the last time so, he swam. Uh, so and he weird. went uh, 200 fly, 155. 200 yards? For 200 yards. All right. I mean, that's yeah, pretty right. good. And, and the 25 to 29 age group. All right. When so, he was 29 years so old. So, here's the deal, Luke. You are about to do a tuner free tomorrow, <laughs> and you're hydrating for it and not drinking beer for I'm it. I'm drinking beer right now. Um, oh, oh you are drinking beer. Yeah, Luke. Yeah, I forgot to bring are that up. Are you going to go faster than 155 tomorrow? I'm sure. We have short course meters. That's his only scapegoat. That's the big uh, no way right now. Yeah, but you're doing a 200 yards free. Are you going to go faster than 155? That would be what I'd want to go. Are you going to go faster than 155? <laughs> I want to go 140. <laughs> 130. You know, the sun's coming down really low right now. Should I adjust the time? <laughs> yeah. Eddie yeah. Reese style. Yeah. So t- earlier, Wade, we were talking about the dry land workouts that Texas used to do. Yeah. What was, oh, your, oh, what was, uh, what was the, the least favorite thing that you did in Texas dry land? All right. I'll, I was telling you about this before. It's called wheels. Um, wheels. So you get a it's, a, it's like a little two by four. With uh, with lawnmower wheels on the side of it, and you put it just under your your knees, uh-huh. uh, and then you go into kind of like plank yeah. position, yeah. and you have to walk yourself mm. up, uh, walk yourself up ramps, <laughs> uh, like that. So oh what? Your God. feet are like elevated. It's like oh, a, so it's walking like a, plank. A, walking yeah. plank. Yeah. It's like yeah. a walking plank. I can't do that now, Tim. Roller. Actually, going up yeah. hill. hills. Uh, hold on, hold on sorry. And your feet are on the the plank, not your knees. It's a full plank. I'm like, sure your feet, feet are on it. Oh yeah, right? yeah. yeah. I forget which. Like uh, we probably the had the our, 
Probably had them at her ankles or okay. under her knees. So it's pointed. you got to work got that it. ankle ring. So it's I've done that for like Well, I just meant like 20 how... seconds. Yeah, what's the difference? We, yeah. we would... All right, so the, the, the set would be we'd go... We were in the in the stadium, so they have the ramps at the stadium. You'd be in the stadium. Texas Stadium, small stadium. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Carol K. Royal, uh, Texas Stadium. So we'd, we'd go up one ramp, go up the next. Oh, my God. Uh, we'd leave the, the, the wheels there. We would do uh, squat jumps up the next ramp, oh my and then God. lunges up the next one. We'd run down, grab the wheels, go back to the bottom, uh, and then do it again. And then we, we did that a lot. Um, we would also do hops, where instead of walking with your hands, you would do like a, like a push-up hop with two hands. Think of like butterfly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two-handed doing that. It's very so specific. It is, it is so mind numbingly destructive on your arms and your abs and your core and just everything shoulders, would you shoulders. swim afterwards oh that i mean this is dry land yeah. so, so there'd be a half an hour dry land and you jump in the water and do it oh, an probably hour like an hour, hour. Yeah. probably like an hour <laughs> yeah. hour, hour dry land and swim <laughs> afterwards i don't know like, yeah, yeah. Hour, 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 um, so our, our schedule was when we dry land before we swam we didn't swim for that long we did dry land more so you're like what was it like all right so our schedule was we had three mornings a week okay um there were hour and a half mornings. You had to go in Monday morning. Uh, you had to choose two other mornings throughout the week that you're going to go to. Uh, choose. Yeah, well, it helps people out with their schedule. The and you it's nice, though. Yeah. Uh, but you could not go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, you had to space it out Got some it. other way. You could do Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, however you want it, but mm-hmm. not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, but Monday was a must, had to go to that one, and then you choose your two others. Mm-hmm. Then in the afternoons, we would have uh, weights on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So generally, we were, I like, all right, at Texas, we played a lot of six square, which is like four square, but um, with six squares. I don't know what four square is. Uh, four square is, <laughs> is the, uh, it's whoa, the, whoa, 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 whoa. The well, you're not American. You don't, you don't know what I'm talking about. Is it called something weird? What was the game we found in Trinidad? You remember? The game we found in Trinidad? Snakes and ladders. Snakes and ladders. Snakes in Trinidad, and ladders. they don't have shoots and ladders. They have snakes, snakes and ladders. That's true. Here, snakes Luke. And ladders. This You've is heard of snakes square. and ladders? Yeah. You have a ball in the middle, oh, you have a king in the corner, and then yeah, you try yeah. to knock people out, basically. So, yeah, what do you call that in so, Trinidad? Americans call it four square. Basically, it's like dodgeball in. <laughs> it's not dodgeball. Space. You're not, you like bounce the ball and you bounce, ball. You bounce the square. square. Yeah. yeah. I don't it's know. A, I've never heard this or seen this in my life. It's a play. It's <laughs> a I'm, I'm an old man. <laughs> so we would stretch Wait. this out to six squares. So instead of the four here, we elongate it a little bit, which adds a lot of variety in play because right. you have a middle person. Yes, yeah, so you can jump them. So wait, so this is dry land. No, no, this is not. Okay. <laughs> this is the game. This is the game that everyone likes to play. Okay. Uh, so I would go into weights really early, okay, so that I could go play more. Just kind of goof square. around and <laughs> um, whatever, have a good time. Mess. With... But All generally, right, we would, we'd have like an hour, hour and fifteen minutes of wait. As long as you do your weights, <laughs> I'd go in at about one thirty uh, to do my weights. This uh, is fascinating. This full practice thing. started <laughs> at three thirty. Okay. Um, so I'd go in at one thirty. So two hours before your swim workout, you're starting your weight workout. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, right. uh, but but I, I was only going in early because I wanted to play more six, six square. square. Oh, <laughs> okay. There's Is like a few of us that were like getting there really early. You've so never seen square four square. Time. Oh, my Lord. Have you guys seen netball? No. no. I've seen netball. I've there's, seen there's it. There's a world I'm championship sure for netball. And I guess that's four true. square looks like kindergarten practice. So would your class? It is. But four square is no, kindergarten no, practice. Just to be straight. Yeah. Wade would go do like a little kid warm up because he was... Youthful at heart, I think, still <laughs> yeah. in college. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah find all my the, classes the happiness were scheduled like 8 o'clock college. till 12 o'clock. Oh, man. That's okay. a busy schedule. Um, okay. And then on I mean, top of morning like, practices. Well, we got morning practice, so you're up anyway. You might as well go from morning yeah, practice. Yeah, all out. So you can right. take a nap after lunch, too. Uh, I, I, I Not when you have six naps. square around the corner. Mm-hmm. What? Not when you have six square to go play. Exactly. <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> yeah. So, then, yeah. So, I did an uh, hour, hour and 15 minutes of, of, uh, of lifting and then we would do our two-hour practice after that. That'd be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Tuesday, Thursday, we'd have like an an hour, hour and a half of, uh, let's see, we'd get on the field at 2, and then, yeah, we'd get in the water at 3.30. We'd be on the field for dry land at 2, mm-hmm. uh, and then we'd do a two-hour workout after that. One of, the, one of the episodes we talked about is why do we think swimmers are swimming longer in their careers, right, to the 30s and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we talked about the, you know, 
two things. One, the integration of, of physio and rehab and recovery and diet and nutrition and, and how in universities, having all people, all those people speak to each other. And also just the role, general role of, of recovery and nutrition. How did that play? How strict was your out of the pool, out of the gym routine? Like how much services were you guys afforded? Was that part of your rehab? Um, what was diet and nutrition like? What was it like beyond the, the heavy training? What was the easy training? For you guys um so like with with dieting and everything dieting recovery, recovery. massages um injury prevention everyone, everyone had their own different methods um we we had of course like full access to the to the university of texas facilities which mm -hmm. are top notch, notch mm -hmm. you know but was that guided by somebody as a program or was it up to you to figure it was yourself more, what you wanted? it was more individual based mm -hmm. um some some guys liked having massages. Some guys uh, they wanted to get you know taped up and iced and and everything. Uh, for 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 some time, Eddie got this like weird machine. It was like uh, it was supposed to like balance your ions or something like that. I don't know. I think he paid a lot of money for oh, this no. thing. And so it was this machine where uh, you held these two like controllers and you put your oh, feet yeah, down on them about. and. Um, and you just sat there for about 15 minutes or something like that. It kind of like vibrated or something like that. <laughs> it's just a vibrating chair. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it was. <laughs> well, how did you feel? <laughs> Ionized. I don't believe. Yeah. I, did, I don't really. I, I did it. It's like, quite well, the maybe. Well, <laughs> that, that's interesting because Eddie has been coaching. How many years he's been coaching? I'm being successful at it since the 70s. At least, uh, right? I think I think his first championship was either like 77 or 78. Wow. And, and he, hasn't, he hasn't lost a. Uh, right. Uh, a, a conference function. championship. So how do how do coaches like nice. how do coaches like him manage to <laughs> continue to evolve and stay ahead of the times, stay ahead of the curve? Because you still you always have of coaches on deck still giving the workout that they knew back when they swam for LSU in the 80s. Yeah. And it's 1995 or something. Like how did he continue to be open to change and it, does he do a lot of research? Does he is he just easy going? I think he's just really interested in it. Also, right. what he I is. think helps is his brother Randy. Randy, oh, no, Randy, and, and Randy, right? Uh, yeah, Randy McCoy. Reese. He he was former uh, Florida coach. Mm -hmm. They won a national championship down there, mm -hmm. um, and then he came out to to Circle C, and he was uh, there in in Austin. Um, and Randy's always been like, I think even more so cutting edge than mm -hmm. than Eddie about training workouts right. and and the science behind it. I think Randy was there when they were like got Gatorade going. Mm -hmm. Um, and oh, at Florida. At Florida. When, when wow. Gatorade started. Yeah. Yeah. Randy is a really yeah. polarizing individual yeah, on, I mean, on many Randy, levels, from personality to just, to, like you said, his interest in science and yeah. progressing the sport. Randy's one of the funniest people that you will ever talk to. He's also a total hard ass. He is a total hard he ass. Will, he, will he will rub you the wrong, you the wrong way a lot of apart. people. Mm -hmm. He will absolutely rip you apart um, and, and and not care at all about it. But... I mean, he's a, he's a really interesting guy, but 100%, he's always been like on the forefront of, of uh, and I, obviously I haven't really been in the scene for a little while, but back then he was But did you experience forefront. any like high tech um, influences in your training? John and I were just last weekend looking at what's the best swimming analysis underwater cameras. And you're in Austin, which is the next Silicon Valley. Did, did you guys have a lot of analysis and camera work? And like, talk about how high tech the training was as well as old school hard just, well, just playing on hard work you I'm know interested. you know what i think a lot of it was was he he was eddie was really able to get the people that were good to help other people so we would we would have right. uh coaching days mm. by our olympians mm. so we'd have technique days where mm. um we'd have like a backstroke lane it's it'd be like go work on what you want to work on so you might mm. have a backstroke lane and uh, Pearsall is looking at your backstroke, being like, and mm -hmm. and Pearsall's like, this is what I do. This is what I'm trying to do with my underwater. This is how I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, and Hanson is yes. uh, Brendan Hanson is is working on a oh. breaststroke. Yeah. Um, and you got uh, Neil Walker helping you yeah. out with freestyle. Mm -hmm. You got Ian Crocker helping you out with butterfly. Um, and Weber so Gale. and yeah, and uh, Weber Gale. And actually, yeah. this is a little bit before Weber Gale. Oh, really? We, Weber Gale was he was a year younger than me, yeah. but um he hadn't quite earned the the stand on the yeah. deck uh, yeah. and coach people <laughs> level yet. Oh wow. Yeah. Um I you know, he he would eventually. Yes. But uh 
Yeah, and so you, you, you have these guys that are very, very, very good at what they do mm -hmm. uh, that are up there coaching you. And do you remember it, any insight they gave you specifically that really changed you? No, I, there wasn't anything uh, really specifically that I, that I could point out that I was like, oh, that's a, that's a mm -hmm. you know, clicking moment. Um, just, uh, just actually, no, there, there was a lot with, uh, with, with turns that mm -hmm. helped me. Um, I, I don't remember specific, sure. specifically the advice. But it resonated. Like you 12. were a high-end NCAA swimmer, and that was a big experience for yeah, you. Olympic Could you imagine trial. somebody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you went to Olympic trials, you came tenth, and that was a huge rub off for you. Could you imagine? Let's say average swimmer, as I say, because you were not average, you're above average. Yeah, um, and well, and that's where like some of these, um, like the, the 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 camps and uh, yeah, what are they called? Like, um, fossil tool. No, just like what what you guys were doing in Trinidad, uh, like Clinic. clinics. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like these we clinics are actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Like these clinics are actually really really good. And I I was doing the the Texas swim camp uh, mm -hmm. every summer as a job, and um, you know it, some of the stuff that was like second nature to me, uh, I was like, oh wait, not everyone knows this. Like, Definitely. oh, right. when you do a flip turn, right. you know, get into streamline position immediately. You know, don't don't like twist and roll and do anything. Just like flip and go, like get off the wall. Um, um, little stuff like that. It like it was, I could see that I could pass that on, and it was the same thing that they were doing. All the Olympians were doing for me as well. Um, so it wasn't just like Eddie and Chris sitting there coaching. You had a lot of good guys that have been there uh, for for a long time that were. Uh, that were giving good advice. I didn't experience that in my community when I started in university. Did you guys have the seniors or the really experienced guys coming back to you like that? Yes. Like, would Caesar be on deck giving you stuff? And well, yeah. Caesar was a year younger than me, um, so actually I was looking at guys like like Charla? Fred Biscay. Um, yeah, even some of the coaches. I mean, oh, Charla... wait, he was a he was well. A coach so my time, my right? first year, Charlie was still training because it was for uh, 2004 Olympic trials, so he's getting ready for that. But then. Yeah, there were a number of uh, athletes that were still around doing peer coaching, and I think peer coaching is one of, the, huge. one of the huge advantages, oh, yeah. I think, of the and college back, swimming system. Because absolutely. Mm -hmm. right. And back then, that's still ahead of its time. I mean, now, I think it's still a little bit ahead of its time in all honesty, but just getting peer feedback and different motivations from mm -hmm. different perspectives. Is that why you have a graduate assistant role, which is what you filled? Is that kind of what why you did that role? Uh, no, no, I mean, I, I did, that, I did that role because I, well, I was still swimming training, and I didn't. Um, and I knew that I wanted to just support the team. I wasn't right. going to go off and get a job. I was still focused on swimming. Right. And so I, I asked, um, uh, you know, Brett Hawk at the time, if there was anything that I could do to support, right. you know, the team. And, uh, and, and then so I, I started helping out the team. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, but the, the peer coaching aspect mm -hmm. is, you know, I, I don't know. There's there's a huge component to it. I, I wouldn't mm -hmm. compare it to like you know the percentage wise how much of it is actual coaches versus peer coaching, but there's a, a heavy component. Whether that's holding each other accountable for how that you work, yeah, or sure. if it's um, you know kind of uh, after practice working on your turns or mm -hmm. your starts or stretching. You know, just yeah. like or stretching, or, or, or how do you, or how do you sort of like go about your day? You know, how like do you affirmation, how right? Do you like, no, academics? Ian Crocker said you have a good turn. Mm -hmm. Holy moly! Yeah, I must yeah. have a good turn. <laughs> this guy's a world record holder. I, yeah, I, like yeah, that yeah. must just really motivate one. I, well, there's one time when uh, uh, this is before a Crocker kind of he had he had this uh, worlds. I think it was like 2003 or 2004 where. He, where he went uh, 51 9 in his 100 mm -hmm. meter butterfly. He totally skipped 52. Yeah, I think I remember. He went from like wow. 53 yeah. to a 51. 51 um, and, but it was like before he had that breakout where, where Eddie actually had him come and look at my freestyle. And I was just like, <sighs> like, whoa. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is he in Crocker? He in Crocker. Well, like, the opposite yeah. effect of it, right? Yeah. I never yeah. even thought about yeah. that, right? And I was like, I was like oh, wow. Like, Interesting. I must be doing something right with my freestyle um, there, and, but yeah, that is and interesting. Like, that wow. was really like more. Whoa, <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Kind of geek out inside a little, a bit. little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though you know, like he's my buddy and he's someone that I was training with for a while and and everything. It was like, I mean, he's at the end of the day, he's still Ian Crocker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still amazing. Yeah. yeah. 
one of the saying, things yeah. one of the things that's powerful for me in that peer coaching is um well i guess maybe perhaps um the accountability that you gain by um in in the peer environment in college swimming in a team environment is that um, I can remember setting my sights on people on the team that uh, that I was trying to, you know, like I'm I'm going to beat them in workout, mm-hmm. or uh, I'm as a freshman I'm trying to chase them. And I started on a book mm-hmm. scholarship. I was, you know, state Same. champion in Georgia, but wasn't like I didn't come in as a stud on the team. So I was trying to earn my keep. And there were people on the team that I was trying to keep up with. And there came a point in my freshman year where David Marr said to me, like, Hey, don't look at them look at Fred Bisquet, look at Ryan Walker look at some of these guys who are, you know, you know, yeah, who are at the top of the team and chase them. And that totally recalibrated my thinking about where I should be aiming. And it didn't change anything about like what I was then able to achieve. It was just like, oh, this is sort of the, the, the curve that I need to be on. Yeah. Um, and that, that reframed my thinking about, around what sorts of things are those guys doing to be great you know to to be some of the world's best well what is that because and and i, I know you're going to say this one answer but it, it, it's something that i wasn't around or swam with the world's best that i moved to california really um i competed against them but i didn't train with them until i swam with like yourself and bob all and these people mm-hmm. and it's, that's when i really really truly realized that the biggest difference I mean, this is regular people but the yeah. biggest difference between us that myself i know personally is that i you all say this i didn't work as hard for as long as they have what do you think of this? They just wait, they spent more no, time. No, I think there's more to it, it than that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, things, there's, 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 there's a mental yeah. aspect yeah. to it where, yeah. where they they go like these guys can go to another level mm-hmm. um, in, mentally. Mm-hmm. Almost like they figure like some way to like jump leap to the next level. Well, so so there's, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, there's a story of of Pearsall his freshman year um, where we were we were swimming against Michigan in a in a dual meet. And um, I can't say what Michigan's training habits were before the stool meet, but you know, as as you know at Auburn, you got a target on your back mm-hmm. when you when you swim a dual meet against Texas against the the top schools. You have a you have a target, mm-hmm. and in other schools they want to take you down. Mm-hmm. Um, and and again, I can't say what their training was before. It feels like they had rested a little bit for right. this. And this is like a this is like a late October dual meet. Okay. Um, heavy training. And so this is like we are in heavy training. We are we are tired. So Didn't Eddie have a saying like slow Vember or something like that? Like November slow Vember? No, I don't, I don't That's know. like a modern thing, I think. Like yeah, he, I saw like a video a few years ago. He's like, This is like slow Vember, like we saw him slow during November. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, yeah. That that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Because, so Pearsall comes yeah. in exhausted to this training. Well, no, so Pearsall Pearsall is is uh He's walking to the meet and um, and he's uh, singing some Led Zeppelin and does like a little jump uh, over maybe like uh, like a, a bike rack or something like that. And of course we're swimmers and so we're completely uncoordinated. Yeah, it looks very um, classy. And so he rolls his ankle. <laughs> oh no! He just totally rolls his ankle, and <laughs> and now his ankle is swollen up. Um, Jeez. And and it, like we're walking into a dual meet. Um, there we go, boys. Sorry, there we go. Cheers again. Thanks, thanks for uh, yeah, this is yeah, nice so yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, I had to go yeah. check on the yeah. everyone so inside. Tomorrow, Luke. <laughs> um, so he rolls his ankle like day of the meet, yeah, walking, walking to the, to the pool. Pool. like the walking last the minute, basically, yeah, exactly. Jesus. Uh, and so he can't, like, he can't kick oh with his God. with his right foot. Um, yeah. Dolphin King with and his he, swollen ankle. Yeah, it doesn't work. It's, it doesn't it's, work. it's awful. Yeah. So brutal. Um, and so uh, Christy Young is is in the two hundred backstroke, and he he's a good swimmer. Mm-hmm. Um, and Michigan, and, right? What yeah. Michigan? Michigan yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's Michigan yep. dual meet. Um, and so, God, they uh, he they get in the water, and 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 Aaron still swims the race, and you could see like every wall he pushes off and goes immediately to the surface. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, but like, there's just so much like mentally Pearsall is just like, I am not going to lose this race. Yeah. Like Whoa. I am but not geez. losing this race. It doesn't matter. I think they both went 144. Wow. In October. Whoa. Jesus. But yeah. Aaron is known for that. Race. But Pearsall yeah. wins the race because like, because he doesn't lose the 200 back. All his Olympic medals. I like that. He always won. He always. You knew he would get his hand to the wall. 
all his yeah. Olympic gold medalists. You know, he was tied to five meters and he won. He yeah. had to win. He won yeah. all he those was, close races. No yeah. yeah. He did lose the one to Lockie, right? Yeah. Oh, 2012. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or no. 2008. Eight, eight, yeah, I think. Yeah, it was eight. Yeah, it was eight. Yeah, back, 12. he won gold, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but he came back the next year and broke when the world is record. That, and that's still the world when record. When is that record going to be broken? We had an episode about this as well. Like some of the yeah, you know, I did say that the 800 free world record is the the fastest one on the books. But Pearsall's 200 back record is a fast world record. 151. Nine, I think it is. Yeah. 151. Did Who's coming close to that? And is it the Japanese kids? I don't know. What that's. He's nobody's coming close to it right no now. No one's coming that close yeah. to it. Not back for sure. Yeah, yeah someone will get it though. Yeah. Someone will get it. Eventually. You guys have a pretty good alumni meet. Record. Don't you yeah. have a nice yeah. alumni meet? And Josh Davis comes back and swims oh, it and man. all that stuff. Isn't that fun? Meet? <laughs> Josh yeah, you guys Davis. Know. talk about that. Uh, that guy. Yeah. I love Josh, Josh Davis. Legend, all right, man. so J Josh Davis, he he would come in. He had the the, the craziest training routine. Mm -hmm. Because he was still swimming when I was swimming. He swims masters, so he's legit. Yeah, I mean, and he's just, I mean, he is best. just all about um, just, like, being healthy and swimming mm -hmm. and everything. But he would come in, and he had his his gallon of water that he would, it was just like a, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like a milk gallon that he hey would guys. water. He didn't want to have a water bottle. He had a gallon of water. He'd slam that down and be like, all right, guys, what are we swimming today? And he'd, he'd swim one practice and then you wouldn't see him for like four or five days. You're like, where's Josh? Like, <laughs> and maybe he was swimming at a different place. Maybe he was at Circle C swimming. Sure. I don't know. Uh, swim with, with Randy or then he'd come back in and with, gallon of water down like <laughs> he just like he so we kind of you know everyone kind of has their set lanes you, did you guys have that uh in in auburn lane eight yeah, yeah. okay you yeah, yeah at purdue yeah you have your, your, yeah, your yeah, set yeah. lanes yep. and he would just totally throw off that rhythm because yeah. you know we had three people per lane right. most of the time you, you, said that, guys. you don't want more than three because then it just gets a little <clears> tight right and then Josh would just like hop into a lane with his gallon of water. It's like you didn't know nice what to do. And keep up with you guys and, and, and take you down in some sets. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, he could always keep up. He keep up. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah, he's always been in pretty good shape. I mean, he's yeah. putting up good times still. Yeah. Three time Olympian gold, gold medalist, main thing. Three time gold medalist. Yeah. 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 We, so we used to talk about Josh Davis swims. And this goes back to like, actually, it was back to Stingray's days. We talk about it some in, at Auburn. But Josh Davis. Is he Davis from Texas swims, originally? Yeah. Josh yeah. Davis? So yeah. San Antonio, probably. Okay. All right. Yeah, but we would, we would talk about Any, um, like st strategy and races. And Josh Davis was known for going out fast and hanging on. Yeah. And, he would, and he would hang on at 200 meters freestyle. Like, yeah, like, mentally strong guy. Right? Or 96. Uh, but I mean, but just had a strategy about swimming. Jesus. Sorry. Hey, guys. Hey, watch us read our iPads. But no, we're starting to fat check because I'm we're saying I'm saying a lot of crap and I want to make sure I start saying accurate relays, things right relays, now. Relays. So yeah, he got yeah. three goals. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Three goals. Yeah. Silver. Go ahead. That's still yeah. impressive though that he can keep up with you, like with you guys, especially if he's, he's not still trained. going fast. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. older than me. Yeah. You believe that, Justin? Yeah. Older that's than Luke. How does that make you feel? <laughs> older than Luke. Right, and this so guy keeps were, talking you were, about how he was saying something before about. Uh, how your coach w was saying, like, you know, don't set your sights on on. Yeah, that's weird. Like, that. um, I got I got forced into that because I oh. my freshman year I was in a lane. It was me, uh, Nate Dusing, and and Joe Montag, um, oh, and yeah. so those were both like postgraduate Good guys. Oh, yeah. And Dusing, obviously, he legend. Um, I mean, he was like one forty two two hundred IM. Yeah, um, so versatile. Yeah, he, he, he was in 2000. Well, no, I guess it didn't break the world record. He had an NCAA record. At, yeah, he had an NCAA yeah, record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. Did. yeah, yeah. Um, he, I mean, he was he was key to those four championships for for mm. Texas. He did a lot. You know, I yeah. mean, he was a high school national record holder. Right. Oh, okay. Cover swimming world. Um, he was. Where is he from? Uh, he was from Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, Western Louisville. Right. And he was. Uh, I think no, so from Northern NCU. Kentucky. Yeah, he's from really? Kentucky. It's not far from you. Yeah, yeah, not far at all. What, what's the big team out of out of Kentucky? He, um, Louisville, well, the one I was thinking of was Lakeside, Lakeside right which is where the Burkles yeah. uh, swam. Yeah. Lakeside Aquatics. Yeah. 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 I think he swam, swam at Cincinnati Marlins. I'm sorry if, uh, if Deucing's not from there. I think he swam at Cincinnati Marlins. Cincinnati Marlins. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought he was from He's from Kentucky, I believe. He swam. Oh, but he came up to Cincinnati from. I mean, fun Ohio fact time. So, okay. So, Ohio Cincinnati Airport's in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So it's what? really close yep. to the border there. Yep. So I think he's from Northern Kentucky and went to high school in Kentucky, but the Marlins were like, you know, the main show in town. That's got where it, got um, it, got it. Oh, it, was, yeah. it was a legendary 200 flyer female 
from the 70s. Mary oh, yeah, Keymaker, yeah, Mary T. She's from the Marlins. They have yeah, the it. Keatings are from the Marlins. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of great swimmers. Yeah. What but, else do we have to say about Nate Doozing? Let's go, <laughs> let's go deep. All right. <laughs> well, he, he was a versatile guy, that's history. for sure. What, what else do you was, know about him? Well, he was Man. my roommate for a little bit after my right, freshman. Let's go oh, real like, deep, oh, guys. What's he like as a roommate? All right, Saturday night. I'm a mean cook, but he can't wash his laundry. I went to Deuce's wedding. Yeah, he's a great guy. But... Um, I was a freshman. He's a uh, he's a post grad, uh, oh, and 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 Joe Montag was a post grad as well. Um, and Joe Montag, he's a great 400 IMer. Um, he's a Houston guy. Uh, they were like, oh, we got a freshman. You're going first. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's what Eugene Gasso did to me one time at a practice. Oh, that was bad. And so oh, yeah. I had to go first. And, you know, I was really timid because, again, like, Brian, I'm coming out of Georgia where, like, all right, Chanteau was good. Chanteau's a good swimmer. I was n- good, but no Chanteau. Like, I was a state record uh, holder and, and everything like that. But, like, I mean, I was yeah. nowhere Not, near you Texas. You guys were Olympian so I'm like, I'm, swimmers, right? I'm feeling right? really, really nervous about everything. And I, I get... In, into there and uh and they're like you're going first and i was just like oh oh so <laughs> i had to i just had to start going and then we had this weird thing on in the distance lane where we didn't warm up um we started holding under a minute pace on uh, we? just diving in oh my god <laughs> that's so smart and it was i don't know where it came from i think it was like johnny neighbors uh, uh who's another guy on the team um he, like we'd just dive in to start and it would just we'd, we'd start it like right at a minute pace uh on her on our warm-up just like first 400 it's like four minutes welcome to texas and then, yeah, uh, and then the that, that, that wasn't that wasn't like my first well, few months uh but i my first few months i i was put right there in the uh number one position and um and it was hard, and actually, I got to a point my my freshman year. It was probably like mid October, where where I was, I kind of broke down, and I just I got down, to yeah. a point where like I just kind of climbed out of the water, and I, I looked at, at Cubic, and I was like, Chris, like I I, I, I can't do it. I I'm dying. I can't I can't do it anymore. My body was just broken, and he's like, Okay, okay, yeah, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Go go. Swim the, with the sprinters, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I finished the workout with the sprinters. I was like, "Oh God, this is so much better." <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like, got a little bit of a rest, and and you know, then he, he kind of talked to me. He's like, "He's like, you know, you're doing fine." It's like it's hard in the beginning, but then after that little break, I was just I was number one in the lane because they made me. Um, <laughs> And and you're just you're racing these guys that are really fast, and but then the co- competitive aspect kicks in, and you're like, again, like I was saying, I don't care that you're fast, I'm gonna race you, and and mm. yeah. How did you end up at Texas? How did I end up? Yeah. I mean, why why did you choose? Oh, it? how did they I chose you? How you, how did you qualify? How did you get um, there? Um, I got there uh, through Chris Davis, actually the uh, the Swim Atlanta head coach, uh, owner, um, the founder of Swim Atlanta. Um, he, he and Eddie are good friends. Um, and, and Chris, Chris talked to Eddie about me, uh, and like kind of put it in, in a good word. Did you want to go why, Hold on. Why did he do that? Because you yeah, didn't swim for uh, Swim Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good point. Yeah. He's, he's a good guy. He sees talent. He knows what, uh, mm. did you ask him for that? I, I can't remember, honestly. I don't think so. Because you were Eric Chanteau's year, and Chanteau was swimming for Swim Atlanta at the time. Yeah, but Chanteau could have gone to Texas. Right. And Texas wanted him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They they absolutely wanted him. Right. Um, but, yeah. And uh, we... Honestly, I, I, we made we made a lot of mistakes with my recruiting class that year because there was a lot of talent. Because my year, it was, it was Pearsall, it was Chanteau, it was Lochte, it was Peter Vanderkay, mm-hmm. Christy Young. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else was in there? Uh, there? I mean, there's a lot of talent. John Mullen? No. 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 Okay. Yeah. You're after. Sorry. You're after. <laughs> it's yeah. coming up later. That's, the Brian, that's the Brian Lundquist <laughs> era. Oh, one more year. I'm not as old as either. Yeah. Yeah. George Bovell. Yeah. 
George Ravel, mm-hmm. and and obviously mm-hmm. Pearsall was was great talent. It worked out, mm-hmm. but Tarwater, uh, Tarwater, Tarwater, yeah, Tarwater was there. Um, me? Yep. And, but it uh, Pearsall was only going to be there for two years. Uh, he was mm-hmm. going to go pro after two years. We knew so that he already guy. made the Olympics. Uh, yeah. is when he was eighteen, right? Or uh, fifteen. Fifteen. He made two thousand in Sydney. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he and Michael were 15 when they made it. Wow. Uh, sorry, yeah. uh, Pearsall was 16. 16. Okay. Michael, Michael was 15. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was 16 when he when he was on on Sydney, um, and he was already a world record holder when he was recruited. When he showed up, yeah. yeah. So you yeah. know, it's like yeah. well, you already have like the best on the wall. Yeah. 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 Um, right. What was his secret? He said, "This taking to the next level and being a badass. We just wanted to race." And oh, that's with, it, right? that with him and training, Pearsall Pearsall just had his like, own. His own way of doing things. He's so laid back and easy going. He's heard, so right? laid so quiet back. Exactly. Yeah. He's very chilled. Um, I mean, he's don't don't let that chill fool you. He's hyper and uh, like intensely oh. competitive. Yeah. Um, but but it's not like it's not his number one feature. Like in the water, in a in a set, in a in a race, he he's going to work people, work you and beat you. He's gonna he's gonna do it. But um. But that's not his number one feature. Where that is the number one feature of a lot of guys. Mm-hmm. You know, there's other guys that, that couldn't drop it off, couldn't leave it behind. You know, you go to a party later and, and they get intensely drunk and, and want to fight people. You know, there, there were those guys. Um, but, but Pearsall wasn't like that. The secret to his success, I don't know. Freak genetics mixed with, like, uh, just incredible stroke mixed with like he ate more than any other person he ate I've a ever lot, seen. Really? Oh my god. He was he could he could put down a meal. Oh. <laughs> what do you what do you think it was like genetically then that stood out? Or like even mechanically what stands out? He had a very long torso. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. and I'm not sure how that played into things. Uh mm-hmm. obviously long arms because every every good swimmer has mm-hmm. like pretty long arms. Mm-hmm. He had like a really long, strong torso. Uh but just like Every every stroke that he took, he just got the most out of that stroke. Mm. Isn't that what something you saw with? And you mentioned it's one of your favorite races, I believe. Was it a 2007 World Championship in Montreal? It was Crocker's 100 fly. 2005 World Championships Champions, in Montreal. Sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah. You mentioned that's one of your favorite races. Man. But talk about what Crocker like and what was that race like for you guys? Because you were training with him, so I'm get up and so I'm race that race. What was it like to when he came back? Do you knew he was going to swim fast? So, so just for context, that's when he went fifty point four and broke the world record in the right. fly. Um, the, the race oh, I was I referring had missed to it, was, right. was yeah. the fifty fly. So yeah. I had I'm said fifty three and and he went down to fifty one. Well, it's I think you were talking about two years before. Two before though. that, it's well, yeah. fifty two and he went down oh, to fifty point. Yeah, got it. fifty yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Sorry, I, yeah, it's been a long time. What was that like though? Like you know, knowing how he was preparing, seeing him prepare. And were you expecting that? And when he came back, what was what was his mindset going to that? Because you know we all had unexpected fast swims, right? Was that unexpected for him? Was that, did, did he had that written down on his on his room, and he knew that time he was going to go? I, I you know, know, honestly, I, I I can't speak for him on what he had prepared for, but he had been in a little bit of a, a slump right. actually, because uh, in NCs before uh, he he had always he always won the hundred fly, but he hadn't really broken out in other stuff. He tried the 50 free and the right. 100 free. And he, had a, he had an incredible uh, finish in, uh, in, the, in the relay. Remember in, uh, uh, in Athens at NCAAs? His, his, yes. His last, off, I do remember that. Yeah. His, last, uh, his last 100 on the relay, he was like, I don't know, uh, 42 or something like that. Which at the time Yeah, which at the time was, was Still crazy fast. Yeah. 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 Um, but he had been on a little bit of a slump where he just wasn't quite hitting things. And he had actually, Crocker, uh, he moved up from the sprint lane over into like middle distance. And so it could have been, um, could have been some of that like working itself through where. Did you see that? Did he, did he seem like he was in a, in a mopey or he was just business as usual when he so, was in that slump? Um, you remember? He, he's a, yeah. He's always Crocker. He's always been very quiet, and very reserved. Um, he's not. He's not at all like any other Olympians that I've seen. Where he like Crocker likes um, things kind of particularly uh, like in his own way. 
he's really big into old cars and old music, restoring right. guitars, stuff right. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's a very like quiet, kind of gentle guy. Um, right. And and so you could see that he was kind of I don't know maybe struggling a little bit with with where he was and how he was performing and everything like that. And then all of a sudden he busted out that that fifty point. It was like 50.8, 50. 50.4. 50. 50.40 50. was the world record that he set that year. Oh, yeah. But yeah. And yeah. I remember like, watching He just like so reset fast. the standard. You know what's crazy? Yeah, That's it was so fast now. All so fast 52. now, and it was, in a, it was in a leg suit. Yeah. All 52s. No one had ever gone faster than a 52, and then he went 50 point. Why? Yeah, how how, how that happen? I, I think it was just a combination of, of moving up, training a little bit differently, a little bit harder, yeah. and, and kind of... Uh, Getting mentally there, and then once he awesome. mentally got there, okay. it clicked, gotcha. and he was he was able to uh, he was able to sustain that for a long time because yeah. then uh, yeah. his fifty free went off the rails, and his hundred free went off the rails, and um, and the next the next year after that was uh, it was short course meters in New York for NCAA's. And and he just right. he just killed it there. Oh, that's interesting. That short course meters. Yeah, they did so, that every Olympic, Olympic year. Oh. That was the last year that they did it. Oh. Yeah. So but you didn't race with him. I mean, so you didn't train with him. I mean, I trained with him. Yeah, because he you would do move sets up. together. And when he went to the mid D set, did you come down to train with him? Um. So I was a I was a distance guy, but I also had two hundred butterfly and everything. Right. And actually, Croc. No. Dude, Croc. I think he moved all the way over. to to, to like doing some distance stuff. Wow. That's a big ballsy big, move. Yeah. But we, not not yeah, every day, yeah. not all the yeah, time. But still though, just kind of throw just little really, flashes. So of the it. way the, the way that our pool worked was we had distance in the far left lanes, and there was about three lanes of that, and then it was like middle distance stroke, and then it was uh, breaststroke and, and sprints. Right. Um, and so he yeah he moved over into into the far left lane for a little bit. He recognized he needed a big tw- switch, and so did his coaches, mm. right? That's yeah. Um, I think initiated that. Yeah, interesting. I have no idea. Yeah, I, right? couldn't, I, mean, I couldn't speak to yeah. that. That's intriguing, though, to know that. Yeah. I mean, someone has had so much success to make that make that switch or that adjustment. Yeah. Didn't they make, yeah. like, a documentary? That's a bold move. Back in the day of, like, Michael Phelps versus Ian Crocker. Like, they're, they had, like, a rivalry going on or something like there that. There was that rivalry because, I mean mm-hmm. – um, yeah, and, and and was that maybe a potential reason why he moved up at the time, or was that non-existent? Um, it's going to let me know if I'm wrong. Time, <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, I'm not going to talk yeah. today, honestly. <laughs> at the time, I'm not sure if, if Michael was was doing the hundred fly mm. in the capacity yeah, that he was because yeah. this is gearing up for 2004. Right. Okay. Um, Athens, and I think. Mm. When when did he Phelps? won it in '04? Yeah, I think that was like his right, debut right. kind yeah. of, yeah. of that uh, hundred they, fly, right? Because he like touched him out, like he the very last year, yeah. right there. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but I think Crocker won trials, and then Phelps won. The That's Olympics. exactly yeah. what it was. Uh, yeah, Croc won trials, and then and then Phelps won in the Olympics, and now it touched him. Yeah. That, so talking right. about two hundred fly and Phelps. Did you race him head to head, and what was it like racing Phelps head to head in anything? Did you well, any beat drill me. meets? And yeah, obviously, <laughs> like diving the water next to him. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. Let's dive deep into that. All right. Did you, you race? Well, well, first off, back. did you race Phelps? And, and was it like him being side by side with you, maybe, and then no, he came back? Or, I don't know. No. What was it like? Um, so, did you so, see a difference in like <laughs> the board? There, no, there. So there was never any him what coming back on me. He went out way faster than me, and he also came back way faster than I went out. So we went out fast. So so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go out fast, and I'm gonna come back fast. (laughs) I'm gonna win. So first time I raced against first time I raced against Phelps was uh, 2003 Maryland uh, Nationals. Maryland, yeah, that's a real pool in Maryland. 18 years old. Okay. University of Maryland. University of Maryland. Uh, they have the that's close to him. him. I don't know. They had the new pool in 2003. Okay. Right. <laughs> Tell us more. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, he was uh, raced against him there, and it, and he was very good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what a man. Yeah. So he was 18 then. He was 18. He said so it man, he was yeah, yeah, yeah on his. Yeah, because he's exactly. A I was there. I was there when yeah. he so set his we're... first world record. Oh wow! Oh really? It was it was the best race that I've ever seen in my life. Well, that's one of the topics wow. we had as yeah. well. <laughs> we had that topic. All right, really. All right. So this was in Fort Lauderdale. It was just after I'd 
made uh that's right made national. the outdoor pool at Fort the, outdoor, the international the whole, yeah, yeah the whole, international crappy pool forgive pool. me sorry it was, no it's it's very shallow yeah, it's oh, very yeah. choppy it. it's <laughs> no one's supposed to, to break world records there and it was the best swim that i've ever seen in my life and it was between uh eric vent and michael phelps um and it was the 400 im that's right. And so oh, this is. I saw a video of that a month ago. There's, yeah, a, yeah, there's a plaque on the wall at the Hall of Fame pool that says that when you go there. Yeah. It was. It was. Uh, wow. And they both broke Tom Dolan's record. But Tom uh, Dolan. it was. It was a, the craziest race that I've ever seen. So, mm-hmm. all right. Um, you have. You have on the swimmer side. Everyone is a big vent fan. Right. Uh, on the audience side, um, no, they don't really know vent very much, but they all know the the young phenom. Michael Phelps. Maybe break, why does everyone like Vent on the swimming side? Because he's a hard ass. Yeah, he, mm-hmm. and he's like the the grinder, right? He was a grinder, right. man. He was coming out of like there's all these Vent stories yeah, of yeah. him him doing like thirty one thousands under a minute, you know, and, one thousands uh, under a minute. Sorry, one thousand <laughs> uh, holding a minute pace. Oh, so under under uh, under ten minutes. Oh wow. Um, and he did that. Mm-hmm. Like he was he was doing these was crazy workouts. Yeah. He went out to SC. And he swam the fast machine, all geez. the time. That dude, he lapped me three times in the mile. Oh he my came God. out to Texas. We had a... He had, <laughs> What's he? How tall was it? 14, 45 or something. He probably went. Yeah, yeah he's, he's what? 5'10"? Like, he, 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 he was 5'10". Like, and he had this kick like a madman. It was just like... First guy I ever saw was six feet kicking in a mile. He, yeah. It was a crazy, crazy... Which I know he did too, but he was guy I saw. Yeah. Um... And so, like, yeah, he, Vent, I think, was, like, the people swimmer, you know? Because, mm-hmm. um, like, we, we knew... More was, relatable, maybe. Or, we knew yeah. how much work he had done, and and um, and he was a little bit older and more established in, 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 the, uh, in the community. Um, and so they dive in, and and obviously Michael is a, a butterflyer, and so he goes, and he just... Get, he goes out, I think, in about... I think he went out in, like, 55. Yeah. He took it out pretty Ryan. fast, if I remember He was correctly. out <laughs> super, super fast. Yeah. Um, and he's like a full two body lengths ahead. Um, and then backstroke, they're about, you know, they, they held about even. And at this time, um, Vent somehow made a, a switch to like being a really good breaststroker. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Phelps had no breaststroke. Yeah. And Phelps had no breaststroke. We talked about this. None. Ryan. Um, and so so they, they hit the wall. Uh, Phelps pushes off with a clear lead going into the uh, into the breaststroke leg, and and this is where the crowd kind of comes into it, and so all of the swimmer <clears> side is yelling. Are they in world know, record pace? Is the announcer announcing their world record pace at that point? Um, I I can't remember yeah. that. I was just I was caught up in the moment watching them, and so the whole the whole swimmer side is going. You know, obviously when you when you yell, you're like, oh yeah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> just that like. That quick, like, yep. Oh. Yep. Oh. Uh, and so he's gonna whole, hear us in this moment. Yeah, and this, you have this. You have I like, swear, I swear. You, you have like point two five seconds to to yell your your cheers for this person. But Vin had sort of an understated breaststroke. He, he was, was known as a freestyler, strong. but his breaststroke his was back very good. It was dirty. very, very, very. Yeah. His whole back half was mm-hmm. um, sick. And and so Vin starts catching up little by little, little wow. by little, just like little by little, away. just like getting back, getting back, getting back. And um, and then they finally push off, just neck and neck, going into the freestyle leg. And so we're all thinking, Vince oh, well, Vince, Vince got, got this. this. He's a miler. He's you know, he he's a distance freestyler. This is like his thing. And and but then they're just battling, just racing, going in head to head. They're like, no one could get anything. I think Vince maybe pulled up a little bit. They hit that last wall. And Phelps goes underwater and stays underwater oh. and kicks out and just pulls up a little bit ahead oh. and and just held on and they were both well under the world record. Uh, I think I think Phelps out touched him by maybe a tenth of a second or something oh. like that. But it there, there was no reason any of them should have gone that fast. But they had each other just pushing them and they're just pure racers were they re- so they're fully rested and ready to go it was nationals, was nationals. um i, there, I think it was uh it must have been 2000 and 2002 yeah yeah and so, it was it was you so, were talking about how bad the pool is i yeah, mean it's, it's it's a great great facility now because it's been renovated yeah. but 
that that pool was it's so shallow yeah. on the ends yeah. that yeah. when they broke this world record they both stood up Good. Like, yeah. showing, and you can see right? them standing up yeah. in the pool which you've never seen in a pool today at least in most of the places where you yeah. break a yeah. world record mm-hmm. you know i'd be interested to hear michael and uh, eric um, comments on what was their favorite race they've ever swum yeah. and, uh, you know obviously michael's first world record and what a battle that must be in his mm-hmm. top Five, I, I'm guessing, but it would be if I was him, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Especially, I mean, yeah. Phelps wasn't a freestyle. I he mean, everyone knows he can do a 200 free now, but back then, back then he, he was a butterfly, butterfly. 200 yeah, butterfly, butterfly, butterfly only, yeah. and then the 4M exactly. came next, mm-hmm. and then what? Two, and then he two built three, maybe, yeah, and then built finally up to, to be dominant in everything. And you know what? He could have done. He could have done 200 backstroke, and yeah. he did 200 backstroke yeah, he, for a little while. Yeah, he, he, he started. Good times. Didn't he he started putting up some one year uh, in a world championship. Or maybe something? I think he he did. was up there. I don't know. He the, might have done one. I've seen him go 155 in the 200 backstroke. Yeah, which is solid, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which yeah, I'm not sure. God. By the way, when he swims backstroke, you could. It was like he did the water cup drill, you know, where you just like put it on your head. His <laughs> we, the way he swims backstroke, his head's so still. Yeah. But yeah, ben, what a ben and Phelps yeah. had a great. Uh, well, the, obviously Phelps won the two, the four and I am in in Athens, and that was his first gold medal in the Olympics. Um, but Ben got second in that race. I think either I from that. lane one or lane yeah. eight, and it was yeah. it was a great one where Phelps was in the moment. He just won his first gold medal, and he's he's just in that moment living the, this this first accomplishment in his career. And and then and, and then later, and Ben had won or Ben had gotten silver. And had a, had a great comeback, great back half to get to win silver. And then at some point, Phelps realizes that Vent gets silver, and he goes, he he, he reacts to it. Yeah, to it. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know at the time if they were training think, together. Uh, oh yeah, because they might have been um, training been, together uh, by oh, that wow. time in, in Michigan. Yeah, yeah. Michigan the Club Wolverine. Yeah. Um, didn't didn't Vent like swim over all the lanes and get in? He there did. Yeah, like Vent came all the way over to Phelps in that. Yeah, yeah and they're both cool, there together. Cool, right? It was Americans one two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That was really cool. Yeah. yeah. Who else was in that race? Four a.m. Uh, Maluli was, was in the race. Oh, was uh, a young, oh, yeah. uh, a, a yeah. young, um, Laszlo. Yeah. Laszlo Chay. Chay. Yeah. And Laszlo Chay is still good though. That's he's still, he's still racing. Laszlo's yeah. still good, still, but that was. still racing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The bald-headed so, man. <laughs> those are the other players in the race. Yeah, yeah. that was, wow. That was a great race. I remember watching that one. Yeah. Well, folks, should we, um, this, this we're an hour and a half into it. Should we start to wrap up? I mean, I, we could talk forever if we yeah. and stories, man. But first of all, where we where are we, Brian? Yeah, we, yeah, we're, we're in a the, different spot. Yeah, typically we're guys. at John's house. Last episode we were in Trinidad, and uh, now we're up in the mountains at my house. So we're here in the redwoods in California, and uh, yeah, we got to go to Luke's house, and my get, parents' yeah, house. Yeah, it's gonna be it. next. <laughs> yeah, How old are you? <laughs> but it's so good 18. having having Wade on it, and he's good. our first um long guest, and I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's great. Thank yeah, you, Wade. Yeah. Good discussion. Yeah. I, I don't I don't get to ever talk about swimming with swimmers because after like after I was out of swimming, like I just didn't have anyone that I, that I could really relate to with, with swimming. So it's been it's been an absolute blast being able to just like relive like what was a very 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 important time sure. in my mm-hmm. life. I Absolutely. mean, it was my life for mm-hmm. for such a long time. And, uh, and yeah, it's like it's weird how you can kind of carp, uh, you know, put it all in like a little box and, and put it away in the in the in the in the mm-hmm. drawer or something like that. So and we're hoping that I mean we love off. doing this and we would we would talk this if it was on a camera on us anyway. Mm-hmm. But we're hoping that because of that little box that you put away, that box could be opened up and shared and people will find that mm-hmm. interesting and, and and rewarding. We gave back last it, weekend. Yeah. And I kept telling people we gave back, but I got so much by giving back to the clinic we're at. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that people can. You know, I've learned a lot from your from your experience and just now, and I'm hoping people do as well. It's, it's, so thank you. Yeah, it's been wonderful. Thank you, yeah. Thanks for being here. Cheers, man. Yeah. Thanks, man. Right. Thanks Cheers. for coming out. Yeah. Good luck uh, yeah. to everyone swimming the meet tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Social so kick. Luke. Doing oh, no. doing good stuff with that water because uh, yeah. 200 fly is not gonna. Not gonna <laughs> get All right, I'm gonna pop this up. Thanks, guys. Right. Cool. <laughs>